Hello and welcome to our webinar, Book Buzz Junior. I'm Maggie Reagan, Senior Editor of Books for Youth. Before we begin, I'd like to go over some technical details. The audience is in listen-only mode, but we welcome any questions you may have. On the bottom of your screen is a toolbar with a section for Q&A. If you have a question or need technical assistance, simply click Q&A and type your message into the box that appears. We will do our best to respond to all tech-related questions and we'll pass along all other questions to today's panelists so they can follow up with you after the webinar. Links to today's slides were sent directly to you from Zoom at the start of the webinar, but you can also download them at any time by copying the URLs on this screen into your web browser. Tomorrow, all attendees will receive a follow-up email containing links to today's slide presentation, certificate of completion, and video recording. Today, we have the pleasure of hearing from Melissa Croce, Associate Marketing Manager at Macmillan Children's Publishing Group. Margaret Coffey, Senior Manager, School and Libraries at Sourcebooks. Mimi Rankin, School and Library Marketing Manager at HarperCollins Children's Books. And Heather Lennon, Marketing Director at North South Books. First up, we'll hear from Melissa Croce. Melissa is the Associate Marketing Manager for Macmillan Children's School and Library team. She has been with the company for nearly five years. Her favorite Macmillan books to read are graphic novels, middle grade nonfiction, and young adult fantasy. Thus far, she's passed time while in quarantine by throwing herself into half a dozen new projects, including starting a tiny letter, book club, and embroidery, watching the new Emma movie three times, puzzling, trying to become a yogi, and of course, reading. Welcome, Melissa, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, some housekeeping before I get started. Please take note of any titles with NetGalley icons in the bottom left-hand corner of their slides, as I won't be able to send out physical copies of titles. If you have any other questions, my contact info will be at the end of my presentation. So let's get started. Next. First up is A Little Space for Me by Jennifer Gray Olson. Have you ever felt that the world is just too much? Not merely what's happening in it, but the world itself. Its scents, its sounds, its smells, the chaotic energy and the constant activity. The little bespeckled protagonist of this deeply relatable picture book just wants to get a little distance, a little space away from a world that can be both wonderful yet overwhelming. Next. She creates space to be interpreted as either alone time or as a general inner peace she feels from this alone time. And she bottles it up, carrying it, out, carrying it around with her whenever she needs it. Gently exploring the healthiness of boundaries and alone time through adorable and awe-inspiring art, this book is perfect for larger story times and reading one-on-one, -on -one, snug in your own space, which I know a lot of us are in right now. Next. Here we have All, Our, All Welcome Here by James Preller and illustrated by Mary Grandpre. All Welcome Here features haiku poetry by acclaimed children's author James Preller and stunning painting and collage art for Mary Grandpre, the world-renowned illustrator who readers may recognize from her illustrations in the Harry Potter series. Next. This beautiful book is destined to become an evergreen favorite for new students who share these experiences during this special time of year. Buying new school supplies, running to catch the school bus, finding your classroom, meeting teachers, and making friends. Featuring a diverse cast of characters, this book is perfect for back to school story times or anytime you want to remind your community that all are welcome in your school or library. Next. Moving on to middle grade, we have Monster and Boy by Hannah Barnaby, illustrated by Anusha Said. Once there was a monster who loved a boy, he knew the sound of the boy's voice, he knew the smell of the boy's dirty socks, and he knew the sight of the boy's slippers by the side of the bed. The monster had lived under the boy's bed for many years without ever meeting the boy, but he loved the boy more and more with each passing day. The monster would have carried on this one-sided friendship had the boy's mother not assured the boy one night that there was no such thing as monsters. Next. Determined to prove the boy's mother wrong, the monster revealed himself to the boy and thus began one of the greatest friendships in chapter book history. Full of adventure, humor, and lots of surprises coupled with charming two-color illustrations, Monster and Boy is the perfect chapter book series to share with all the newly independent readers and monsters in your life. I call this book a cross between Monsters, Inc. and A Little Prince. Next. We have a book, The Book of Fatal Errors by Dashka Slater. You might recognize Dashka's name. She's the author of both the picture book Escargot and the young adult nonfiction book The 57 Bus. Dashka is a multifaceted writer and is turning her talents to this middle grade fantasy. 
Rufus doesn't just make mistakes, he makes fatal errors. Clumsy and awkward, Rufus is constantly teased by bullies. But now it's summer and Rufus is free. He roams the wildlands of his grandfather's mysterious homestead, blissfully unaware of the danger up ahead. Rufus and his snooty cousin Abigail soon become entangled in the tantalizing world of the Failings, mischievous fairy-like creatures desperate to find their way home. In helping the Failings, Rufus tumbles down a dark path rich with age-old secrets and difficult truths. Any move he might makes might be his final fatal error or perhaps his most spectacular beginning. Next. Here we have Girl Giant and the Monkey King by Van Huang. 11-year-old Tom No is keeping a secret. She is strong, like super strong, like freakishly strong, and it is making it impossible for her to fit in at her new middle school. In a desperate bid to get rid of her super strength, Tom makes a deal with the Monkey King, a powerful deity and legendary trickster she accidentally released from his 500-year prison sentence. Tom agrees to help the Monkey King get back his magical staff if he'll take away her strength. Soon Tom is swept up in an ancient and fantastical world where demons, dragons, and jade princesses actually exist. But she discovers that magic can't cure everything, and dealing with the trickster god might be more trouble than it's worth. Hand this magical tale to fans of Rick Reardon. Next. This stunning picture book is Voices of Justice, poems about people working for a better world by George L. L. Lyon and illustrated by Jennifer M. Potter. In the face of injustice, the world has always looked to brave individuals to speak up and spark change. Nelson Mandela used his voice to bring down apartheid. Jane Goodall gave a voice to the primates who couldn't speak for themselves. The women of Greenham Common used their collective voice to fight against preparations for nuclear war. And today's youth, like Shooters Cat Martinez, the students of Stone, Stoneman Douglas High School and Greta Thunberg, unite their voices to stop gun violence, save the planet, and so much more. Next. Through enlightening poems by award-winning poet and author George L. Lyon and stunning portraits by artist Jennifer M. Potter, Voices of Justice introduces readers to the groundbreaking work of the people who fought and continue to fight to make the world a better place. Next. Turning to nonfiction, we have History Comics, The Great Chicago Fire, Rising from the Ashes by Alex Grodens and Kate Hannigan. The start of a new series. This tells the true story of how a city rose up from one of the worst catastrophes in American history and how this disaster forever changed how homes, buildings, and communities are constructed. Next. A deadly blaze engulfs Chicago for two terrifying days. A brother, sister, and helpless puppy must race through the city to stay one step ahead of the devilish inferno. But can they reunite with their lost family before it's too late? With history comics, you can travel back in time to the deserts of the American Southwest, Southwest the riot at the Stonewall Inn, and beyond. In this new nonfiction graphic novel series, the past comes alive. Next. Moving on to YA, we have A Map to the Sun by Sloan Leong. One summer day, Ren meets Luna at a beachside basketball court and an immediate fierce friendship is born. But when Luna moves back to Oahu, Ren's messages to her friend go unanswered and years go by without a word. Then suddenly, Luna returns, hoping to rekindle their friendship. But Ren is hesitant. She's dealing with a lot, including family troubles, dropping grades, and the newly formed women's basketball team at their high school. Next. With Ren's new friends and Luna all on the basketball team, the lines between their lives on and off the court begin to blur. During their first season, this diverse and endearing group of teens are challenged in ways that make them reevaluate just who and how they trust. Sloan Leong's evocative storytelling about the lives of these young women is an ode to the dynamic nature of friendship. Next. Continuing with graphic novels, we have Displacement by Kiko Hughes. Kiko is on vacation in San Francisco when suddenly she finds herself displaced to the 1940s Japanese internment camp that her late grandmother, Ernestina, was forcibly relocated to during World War II. These displacements keep occurring until Kiku finds herself stuck in time. Living alongside her young grandmother and other Japanese American citizens in internment camps, Kiku gets the education she never received in history class. Next. She witnesses the lives of Japanese Americans who were denied their civil liberties and suffered greatly, but managed to cultivate community and commit acts of resistance in order to survive. Kiku Hughes weaves a riveting, bittersweet tale that highlights the intergenerational impact and power of memory. Next. Another historical novel is Traitor by Amanda Makrina, Poland, 1944. After the Soviet liberation of Lwów from Germany, the city remains a battleground between resistance fighters and insurgent armies, its loyalties torn between Poland and the Ukraine. 17-year-old Tolia is half Ukrainian, half Polish, and he's just joined the Soviet Red Army to keep himself alive and fed. When he, not quite accidentally, shoots his unit's political officer in the street, he is rescued by a squad of Ukrainian freedom fighters. 
They might have saved him, but Tolia doesn't trust them. He especially doesn't trust Solove, the squad's war scarred young leader. Then a betrayal sends them both on the run. And in a city where loyalty comes second to self preservation, a traitor can be an enemy or a savior, or sometimes both. Next. Here we have Kind of a Big Deal by Shannon Hale. The only thing worse than high school itself is peaking in high school, and nobody knows that better than Josie Pye. She was kind of a big deal. She dropped out of high school to become a star, but as we all know, the bigger you are, the harder you fall, and Josie fell hard. Her entire life, in fact, keeps imploding. Broadway dream, dead. Best friend, distant. Boyfriend, quote-unquote, busy. Desperate, desperate to escape, Josie gets into reading, literally. She reads a book and suddenly she's inside of it. And with each book, she's a different character, a post-apocalyptic heroine, the lead in a YA rom-com, a 17th century wench in a corset. It is alarming, but also like kind of amazing. It's the perfect way to live out her fantasies. Book after book, Josie the failed star finds a new way to shine, but the longer she stays in a story, the harder it becomes to escape. Will Josie find a story so good that she just stays forever? Next. Another big book from a big Y author is Instant Karma by Marissa Meyer, and this is her first contemporary romance. Chronic overachiever Prudence Daniels is always quick to cast judgment on the lazy, rude, and arrogant residents of her coastal town. Her dreams of karmic justice are fulfilled when, after a night out with friends, she wakes up with the sudden ability to cast instant karma on those around her. Prue giddily makes use of this power, punishing everyone from public vandals to mean gossip, but there is one person on whom her powers constantly backfire. Quint Erickson, her slacker of a lab partner. Quint is, as you would assume, annoyingly cute and impressively noble, especially when he comes to his work with the Rescue Center for Local Sea Animals. When Prue resigns herself to working at the Rescue Center for Extra Credit, she begins to unpower, uncover truths about baby otters, environmental upheaval, and romantic cross signals, not necessarily in that order. Her newfound karmic insights reveal how thin the line is between virtue and vanity, generosity and greed, and love and hate, and fate. And just as an FYI, this book is not a graphic novel, but if the cover art seems familiar, it's because it was drawn by Caldica Honore Vera Brasco. Next. Now, a book that is a graphic novel is Flamer by Mike Carado. You might recognize the author of the Little Elliot series, and now this time he is back with a YA graphic novel that's based loosely on his own adolescence. Next. It is the summer between middle school and high school, and Ada Navarro is away at camp. Everyone's going through changes, but for Aiden, the stakes feel even higher. As he navigates friendships, deals with bullies, and spend time with Elias, a boy he can't stop thinking about, he finds himself on a path of self-discovery and acceptance. Next. Lastly, we have White Fox by Sarah Faring, the author of, the tr of last year's trilling thriller, The Tenth Girl is Back. After their world-famous actor mother disappeared under mysterious circumstances, Manon and Thais left their remote Mediterranean island home. Rather, they were sent away by their pharmatech tycoon father. Opposites in every way, the sisters drifted apart in their grief, yet their mother's unfinished story still haunts them both, and they can't put to rest the possibility that she might still be alive. Lured home a decade later, Manon and Thais discover their mother's legendary last work, Long Thought Lost, White Fox, a screenplay filled with enigmatic metaphors. The clues in this dark fairy tale draw them deep into the island's surreal society, into the twisted secrets hidden by their glittering family, and to reveal the truth about their mother and themselves. Next. Lastly, I wanted to mention Fierce Reads TBR, a new program that we're doing in conjunction with BookCon um, and Book Expo. Everyone knows that hindsight is 2020, and since it is 2020 and the year of social distancing, we are taking this extra time indoors to revisit some of our favorite books. Not only are we rearranging our TBRs and putting quite a few recent releases back to the top, we're also organizing four incredible virtual author events with our friends at BookCon. Be sure to check the full list of events at fiercereads.com slash FRTBR to find out if one of your faves is participating. So we've already had two events and we will have two more in the next couple of weeks, but if you've missed your favorite, don't worry, the videos will all be archived. Next. That's it for me. If you have any questions, my contact info is here. Again, I won't be able to send physical galleys, but I'm always happy to answer any other questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Melissa. Next up, we'll hear from Margaret Coffey. 
Margaret is what you call a senior publishing professional, having toiled in both sales and marketing for decades. Before joining Sourcebooks five years ago, she worked at a variety of publishers on such properties as Harry Potter and the Hunger Games, and has traveled with beloved original stuffed animal Winnie the Pooh. A voracious reader, she enjoys historical and contemporary fiction, fantasy, and memoirs. She is relegated to reading at home since, since she can no longer fly to accounts and conferences. Take it away, Margaret. Good morning and thanks, Maggie. Greetings from the Chicago suburbs and thanks so much for joining us. Next, I hope you will follow us on Twitter and Facebook and find our galleys on Edelweiss and NetGalley. Next, please sign up for one of our newsletters on our website. Next, many of our authors from all over the world would be happy to Skype with you. We know that your needs have changed, so we've crafted a new read aloud policy which gives you the ability to provide virtual story times. Next. Sourcebooks has created a variety of downloadable activity kits and discussion guides, so please check out our resources for children and adults on our website. And just one note, as librarians and ed educators, you're on the front lines assisting parents and recommending titles. And we are totally in awe of all that you have been doing every day. Next. Next. <laughs> this is fun. Um, here's a few of our recent titles, and now on to our new books. Next. Sourcebooks is thrilled to welcome DJ Fortune to our list. He's the author and illustrator of many award-winning children's books. Using his unique humor and wit to focus on socially conscious messages, his books portray kindness, communication, and emotional awareness. DJ's first book on the source books list is A Thousand No's, which will release in August. There was a little girl who had a great idea. Next, she had the most amazing, superb, best idea ever. No, wait, what do you mean? No, no, no again. By persevering, collaborating, and using a little imagination, all those no's became the building blocks for the biggest yes ever. A Thousand No's is an empowering story about grit, perseverance, and innovation. Next. Explore the complex world of feelings with Corchin's fun and uplifting I Feel series. Next. Kids experience countless emotions every day, but often don't know how to recognize, express, or deal with them. All the books in the I Feel series are simple and silly and offer a great way for kids to talk about different emotions and discover it's all right to feel them all. Next. Corchin definitely captures all the humor and inside jokes in his band nerd series. Come join, the, come join the wild antics of those lovable band nerds like the egotistical trumpet player, bad boy percussionist, flirty yet stuck up flute, overzealous oboe, and many more. Whether you've been in band, saw a band, or can spell the word band, you'll love these instant classes. Next. Raj Haldar, the number one New York Times bestselling author of P is for Pterodactyl, has created another hilarious fresh look at the English language in No Reading Aloud, or is that A-L-O-U-D? Next, this delightful new book places pairs of similar sounding sentences together and illustrates them in two hilariously different ways. The illustrations will give you all the clues you need to decipher the true meanings behind these silly words. Context clues, bright illustrations, and rhyming words will help readers navigate the ridiculously, te ridiculously funny text with ease. Next, the acclaimed author-illustrator team behind the Snatch a Book and the Storybook Night are back with a book-filled adventure on the high seas. Next, Nell is finally a pirate, and she has her trusty pirate's almanac to help her sail the seas, even if Captain Nash doesn't like books on his ship. But when the journey gets rough and the captain is in trouble, it's Nell and all her pirate knowledge that saves the day and leads them to the greatest buried treasure of all. Next. From the New York Times and USA Today bestselling team comes an epic winter adventure, adventure in the How to Catch series. Next. This time, the How to Catch kits are attempting to catch the Yeti in a winter wonderland. How to Catch a Yeti blends STEM concepts with hilarity and chaos to encourage reading, learning, and imagination. With the resurgence of the Yeti in pop culture, this book is perfect for the upcoming winter and beyond. Next. Chris Ferry is the number one best-selling science author of the Baby University series for kids with over 1.3 million books sold. Next. 
He's created a fabulous new series, Everyday Science Academy. You can equip the next generation of scientists with real world and practical examples of scientific and mathematical concepts to help answer many of their why, such as how do planes fly, how do you ride a wave, and bows made. Next, you'll recognize these fun Chris Berry backlist titles. And then we're gonna do several next, so three next. One more. Words hold power and Leto wields them fiercely in The Last Lie, the companion to the ALA notable book, The List. The city of Ark is no longer safe. Before the rebellion, everyone could only speak list, a language of just 500 words. But when Leta became the wordsmith, the keeper of all the words that had ever existed, she learned that being able to express yourself is what makes you human. And now the new ruler has wicked plans to eliminate language once and for all. If a baby never hears a single word, they will never speak. Leta and the other rebels must find a way to defeat the evil for good before they lose the very thing that will set them free. Irish author Patricia Ford wrote this duology as a love letter to the disappearing Gaelic language. Next. Let me introduce you to Scritch Scratch. Lindsay Curry, author of the award-winning The Peculiar Incident on Shady Street, joins Sourcebooks with her new novel. Claire has absolutely no interest in the paranormal. She's a scientist, which is why she can't think of anything worse than having to help out her dad on one of his ghost-themed Chicago bus tours. At the end of the tour, she sees a boy with a sad face and dark eyes at the back of the bus. Claire tries to brush it off. She must be imagining things, letting her dad's ghost stories get the best of her. But then the scratching starts. Voices whisper to her in the dark. The number 396 appears everywhere she turns, and the boy with the dark eyes starts following her. Claire is being haunted. The boy from the bus wants something. Next. For those of you who know me, you may remember that I could not stop talking about the Radium Girls. Sourcebooks published the New York Times bestselling adult book in 2017. Kate Moore has now written a version for younger readers. As World War I raged across the globe, hundreds of young women toiled away at the radium dial factories in Illinois and New Jersey, where they painted clock faces with a mysterious new substance called radium. Assured by their bosses that the luminous material was safe, the women themselves shone brightly in the dark covered from head to toe with the glowing dust. With such a coveted job, these shining girls were considered the luckiest alive until they began to fall mysteriously ill. As the fatal poison of the radium took hold, they found themselves embroiled in one of America's biggest scandals and a groundbreaking battle for workers' rights. Next. 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 And next. The Dark Tide is a debut YA by library technician Alicia Jesenka. Every year on Walpurgis Night, Keldella's witch queen lures a boy back to her palace, an innocent life to be sacrificed on the full moon to keep the island city from sinking. Convinced her handsome brother is going to be taken, Lena enlists the help of the mysterious Thomas Lynn, the only boy to ever escape from the palace. But when the queen's eye turns to Thomas in revenge, she spirits him away. When Lena's caught breaking into the palace, the queen offers her a deal. She'll let him go if Lena agrees to take his place. Against their will, they find themselves falling for each other. As water floods the streets and the dark tide demands its sacrifice, they must choose who to save. Next. From Marika Nijkamp, the number one New York Times bestselling author of This Is Where It Ends, comes a heart-stopping new thriller told from five points of view by teens of different gender, sexuality, and social status. Next. Five friends go to a cabin. Four of them are hiding secrets. Three years of history bind them. Two are doomed from the start. One person wants to end this. No one is safe. Are you ready to play? Next. And finally, Lightbringer is the epic final installment in the New York Times bestselling Imperium trilogy from Claire Legrand. Queen Riel, pushed away from everything she loves, turns to Corian and his promises of glory. In the future, Ileana arrives in the Empire's capital as a broken shell of herself. Betrayed by those she trusted, she fights to keep her power at bay and away from Corian, who will stop at nothing to travel back in time to Riel 
even if that means destroying his daughter. Next. Thanks so much for listening and feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Have a great afternoon. Thanks so much, Margaret. Our next presenter will be Mimi Rankin. Mimi is the School and Library Marketing Manager for HarperCollins Children's Books. She works primarily on conference marketing and library previews, so while we can't see each other in person much this year, she's thrilled to be able to tell librarians and teachers about the new HarperCollins books through virtual events. Be sure to follow Harper Stacks on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. Thanks for joining us today, Mimi. Thanks so much, Maggie. Um, I hope everyone can hear me. Uh, hi again, my name is Mimi Rankin and I'm the School and Library Marketing Manager for HarperCollins. Um, my contact information is on this slide, uh, my email, and if you have any questions about the books you see here today, please reach out. Um, also make sure to follow Harper Stacks on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. Our handles are there, so we can go ahead and get started. Next, there you go, okay. So first up, we have The Couch Potato by Jory John and illustrated by Pete Oswald. This is the fourth installment of the beloved and hilarious food group series. Like the three before it, The Couch Potato is perfect for story time with clever text, engaging illustrations, hilarious puns, and heartfelt message all rolled up in one. Kids of all ages will laugh along as their new best, Spuddy, learns that sometimes it's better to balance screen time and inactivity with fresh air and active playtime, which is perhaps especially pertinent for current times. The couch potato will hit shelves in November. Next. Sunflower Lion, written and illustrated by Kevin Hinkus. Uh, Sunflower Lion is a brand new picture book for very young readers from recent Legacy Award winner Kevin Hankus in the vein of Egg, Kitten's First Full Moon, and A Parade of Elephants. Using simple shapes, a limited and gorgeous color palette, and an engaging, repetitive text, this book introduces the basic concepts of storytelling, shapes, and language in a way only Kevin Hankus can. This book, divided into very short chapters, follows a sun, a flower, and, you guessed it, a lion. It asks questions of its audience and leaves the perfect amount of space for conversation, imagination, and discovery. It's a truly special reading experience. Um, our friend and esteemed educator Dudley Carlson wrote in her response to this book, I love the degree to which Kevin really understands the way children think. In this case, it's the rare ability to speak directly to the youngest child without talking down. Look, do you see it? Sun is like flower is like lion. Watch, see what happens. They'll see it, they'll get it, they'll love it. Like its cousin kitten, it's perfect. This perfect picture book is coming to you in September. Next. All right, 50 years of Frog and Toad. Uh, as you may have heard, Frog and Toad, our friends, turns 50 this year. This beloved friendship has certainly stood the test of time and continues to be adored by children and adults everywhere. This beautiful commemorative picture book edition features the original jacket and the five classic stories and artwork, plus some amazing bonus material. Next. You can see here on the second slide some examples of this. There's the congratulatory pub day telegram from Ursula Nordstrom, a self-portrait of Arnold LaBelle, and an early sketch of Toad there in the lower left-hand corner. In addition to archival materials such as photographs, sketches, and pages from the original book dummy, there's also a short biography of Arnold LaBelle and how he was inspired to write the Frog and Toad uh, story. The larger picture book trim size makes this perfect for story time and reading logs, and it'll be uh, out in September. Next. I Promise by the one and only LeBron James and illustrated by Nina Mata. I promise to be courageous, to be free, to strive for greatness, to be me. We are thrilled to be publishing LeBron James' debut picture book, which has illustrations, as I said, from Nina Mata. This book was inspired by LeBron's foundation's I Promise program that motivates children everywhere to always strive for greatness. This book will also include the original I Promise pledge and a signed letter from LeBron. HarperCollins will make a monetary and book donation to the LeBron James Family Foundation, and I Promise will be on sale in August. Next. Dinosaurs are not extinct. 
Uh, it's a hilarious and non uh, engaging nonfiction picture book about, you guessed it, dinosaurs. <laughs> As STEAM becomes a bigger and bigger curricular focus, this is sure to be a hit with teachers who are searching for good titles with science application. This book stands out from the crowd by primarily focusing not on the lives of T-Rexes or Triceratops, but don't worry, they do make an appearance, uh, but by highlighting the dinosaurs of today, birds um, and pigeons and all kinds of birds. Um, Drew Shenneman, New Jersey resident and cartoonist for the Star Ledger, does an amazing job of presenting facts and research in an accessible and fun way, drawing connections between the extinct giants that get so much attention and the chickens and pigeons we may not think twice about, all while drawing from his comics background to truly create wonderful and scientifically accurate full color artwork. This is one that's going to just fly off the shelves and dinosaurs are not extinct goes on sale in October. Next. All right, sometimes people march. Uh, this is a timeless and important book for activists of all ages. Tessa Allen uh, uses fair, inspiring and uh, text and gorgeous watercolor illustrations in her picture book debut, which is an introduction to the many ways and reasons Americans exercise their freedom of speech to protest injustice. From the Newsies strike of 1999 to the Greensboro sit-ins of 1960 to the more recent Dakota Access Park protests, Dozens of mo movements, marches, and key figures throughout history are depicted in the art. Information about the events and causes depicted is included in the back matter, which also encourages readers to use this book as an impetus for discussion and for learning more about how they can get involved in enacting change of their own. Sometimes People March goes on sale in September. Next. Next. All right, Harper Alley is gonna to talk to you. Sorry, I can go back up, thank you. Uh, Harper Alley is our new graphic novel imprint launching this fall. Graphic novels are becoming a bigger and more popular format for readers everywhere. From early readers through YA, this imprint meets the needs of all readers and is sure to help develop your students and patrons' visual literacy skills. One title I want to talk about in particular is, go to the next slide, Class Act, which is the sequel to Jerry Craft's best-selling Newbery Medal winning New Kid. This book stars Jordan's friend Drew, who has struggles of his own at River Riverdale Academy Day School. Drew contends not only with being a minority student, but also being darker skinned, which brings a new and unique set of issues. Like New Kid, Class Act highlights prejudices and microaggressions that can happen in middle school and presents them in Jerry's expert way of using humor to sneak in some hard-hitting conversation starting truths. We're publishing in October in both hardcover and paperback. Next. Okay, new Sharon Creech. Who are you? Who could you be? Gina Philomena has always told, has always been told she has an overactive imagination. With her bright clothing from her Nona Philomena and visions of angels, she's always felt different from the other kids in her class. That is, until she meets her new neighbor, a mysterious boy named Antonio with a wide, welcoming smile. When Gina and Antonio start school, they meet their new teacher, Miss Lightstone, who opens up their world. She starts with a writing prompt, one time, dot, 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 and the class takes off from there. Through Miss Lightstone's lessons, a world of possibilities begins to awaken within, and Gina observes as her classmates' creativity begins to blossom. With the help of her enigmatic neighbor, Antonio, and the teacher with a gift for inspiring her students, can Gina find the answer to the questions, who am I, and who do I want to be? This is perfect for fans of Love That Dog, and it's about the transformative power of imagination and the journey to becoming who you're meant to be. And this will be on sale in September. Next. Whale of the Wild. This is the next book from acclaimed author, Roseanne Perry. If you loved A Wolf Called Wander as much as we did, get ready to go on another journey with some pretty amazing animals. For Vega the orca and her family, salmon is life. Though not as plentiful as they once were, the salmon that fill the mouth passage in the Salish Sea provide for her family of orcas, keeping them strong during the sparse and hungry winters. Vega is learning to be a salmon finder, preparing for the day when she will be her family's matriarch. But then, Vega and her brother Danab are separated from their family, and a devastating earthquake and tsunami renders the seascape unrecognizable. Vega must use every skill she has to lead her brother across the sea and back to their family. Will Vega become the leader she's destined to be? A Whale of the Wild is the perfect companion novel to A Wolf Called Wander, portraying the delicate ecosystem of the sea and the threats to marine life. Like Wolf, this book has been impeccably researched and vetted, illustrated throughout, will include a map and back matter, and is an excellent read aloud for parents and teachers. This is also perfect for fans of Sarah Penny Packer's Packs, and this will be on sale in September. Next. 
asked a thousand questions. A thousand questions is Downton Abbey set in Karachi, Pakistan. American Mimi and her mother go to Karachi to stay with Mimi's grandparents whom she has never met. Sakina has a dream of going to school, but her family relies on the small wages she earns working for Mimi's grandparents with her father. The book is honest about class differences and is a smart story about smart girls. Author Sadia Faruqi was born and grew up in Karachi and came to the US when she was in her 20s. She says, this novel is my love letter to Karachi, a way to lay bare its many complexities and beauties. This relatable and empathetic story about two friends coming to understand each other will resonate with readers who love Other Words for Home and Front Desk, and it is on sale in October. Next. Next is Everything Comes Next. Many of Naomi Shihab Nye's poems, such as Famous, A Valentine for Ernest Mann, Torn Map, and Kindness, are class classroom staples and teacher favorites. Naomi Shihab Nye has crisscrossed the country and the world, leading writing workshops and inspiring students of all ages, drawing on her Palestinian American heritage, the diversity of her home in Texas, and experience with hundreds of thousands of students and educators, she uses her writing to attest to our fear of humanity. This collection, published to celebrate her term as Young People's Poet Laureate, which goes through August 21, presents the poet's most accessible and luminous poems together for the first time, including new, never-before-published poems and an introduction by the poet. The book will serve as an introduction to the poet's work for a new audience, as well as a master collected poems of edition for classroom and family sharing, and it'll be on sale in September. Next. So moving on to YA. Uh, punching the air. Youssef Salam was just 15 years old when his life was upended after being wrongly convicted in the Central Park jogger case, along with four other boys who are now known as the Exonerated Five. In 2002, after the young men spent between seven and 13 years of their lives behind bars, their sentences were overturned and they were fully exonerated. Punching the Air is a novel in verse by Youssef Salam and award-winning best-selling author Evie Zavoy about a boy who was wrongfully incarcerated. Steeped in the reality of a teen wrongly accused, paired with Evie's and Yusef's glorious lines, Punching the Air is a literary tour de force that also offers many timely and important topics for schools and discussion groups to dig into. Um, this is a really powerful book, and we encourage you to download the e-galley, read it, take it in, share it with the teens in your lives. Uh, HarperCollins will be uh, partnering with nonprofit organizations to donate copies of Punching the Air to incarcerated youth across the country. Partners will include the Campaign for Fair Sentencing of Youth, an organization working to end extreme sentencing for children, as well as the Children's Book Council. And this will be on sale in September. Next. So this is gorgeous cover. Uh, it's this is from Tiffany D. Jackson, last year's Coretta Scott King, John Stetson, the talent award winner. And she also is the author of Allegedly, Monday's Not Coming, and Let Me Hear a Rhyme. So Grown, when legendary R&B artist Corey Fields spots Enchanted Jones at an audition, her dreams of becoming a famous singer take flight until Enchanted wakes up with blood on her hands and zero memory of the previous night. Who killed Corey Fields? Here, Tiffany Jackson delivers another riveting, rip from the headlines mystery, this time about an issue gaining in recognition. While the Me Too movement has gained, steamed, and highlight highlighted horrific abuse in the entertainment industry, stories like the documentary Surviving R. Kelly show that when the victims are women of color, specifically Black women, there's still not nearly enough attention paid. Enchanted Story puts a medicine to that issue, and Grown will be coming to you in September. Next. And last but certainly not least, we have Return of the Thief, Megan Whalen Turner's finale to her award-winning best-selling Queen's Thief series. For those of you who aren't uh, already fans of the series, uh, it began with the Newbery Honor winning The Thief, published in 1996. Four more standalone volumes followed that can be read in any order. Um, the books bring to vivid life a world of epics, myths, and legends, and feature one of the most charismatic and incorrigible characters of fiction, Eugenides the Thief. Uh, now, in the concluding Return of the Thief, Jen is more powerful and cunning than ever before and must navigate a perilous future. And if you're a fan of Jen's, as so many of us are, you'll be happy to know that he appears on almost every page of Return of the Thief. Um, this will be published with much fanfare in October. And a little note from Megan Whalen Turner. Thank you, all of you who have been with me since the beginning and everyone who has joined us on the way. I hope you enjoy the Return of the Thief. I hope it's worth the wait. Next. Oh, that's it for me. So thanks so much. Thanks so much, Mimi. Our final presenter will be Heather Lennon. 
Heather is the managing director and primary marketing contact at North South Books USA, a picture book publisher that creates beautiful books from international authors and illustrators, including the best-selling Rainbow Fish series. Heather, bring us home. Hi, everyone, and thank you for listening. I'm so grateful to have this chance to present some of our most exciting titles for fall 2020. North South Books is known for publishing beautiful books from international authors and illustrators, and this season is representative of what we do best. Slide, please. Next. Since we won't be able to meet in person at ALA Annual this year, I'd like to invite you all to join us on social media. Our accounts are under at North South Books on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you check out our Instagram account right now, we're having a contest to win a copy of our lead title for fall 2020, Hans Christian Andersen, The Journey of His Life. Next. Through an enchanted conversation with a young girl in a horse-drawn coach, Hans Christian Andersen shares his life struggles, dreams, and triumphs, whose threads can be found woven into his greatest stories. He tells her of the fairy tale of his life and how the son of a shoemaker became a celebrated writer. Next. Austrian author Heinz Janisch paints a sensitive portrait of Andersen and his literary work. Slovenian illustrator Maya Kastelik has created a stunning illustration concept for this story that combines the sumptuous art of a picture book with elements of a graphic novel to create a moving inventive story about the life of Hans Christian Andersen. Next. The books also received a starred review from Kirkus, so that was exciting for us. You might know Maya Kastelik from her beautiful picture book, A Boy in His House. She's received a White Ravens Award and been selected for the Bologna Ill Illustrators Exhibition. Heinz Janisch is a beloved Austrian author who's been nominated for the Lindgren Memorial Award and the Hans Christian Andersen Award. Next. I hope you'll enter the contest on our Instagram. Next. One more slide, please. The Little Mermaid. Continuing with our fairy tale focus, we have a beautiful unabridged storybook edition of The Little Mermaid. Slide. There's only one way The Little Mermaid can win the prince's heart and gain an immortal soul. She must agree to the sea witch's terrible deal, give up her voice in return for a pair of legs. But will her dream come true? Slide. Bernadette brings new life to this world-famous tale by Hans Christian Andersen, immersing the reader in the magical world beneath the sea. Next, please. English author Bernadette Watts, best known throughout Europe simply as Bernadette, has illustrated many folk tales and fairy tales and is especially known for her work with North-South books. Next, please. There was a turkey on the farm. A brand new picture book from beloved author illustrator Valerie Gorbachev. Turkey is so bored. She can't find anyone to be friends with on the farm. Hen is too busy with her chicks. Rooster crows too loud. And who could be friends with a goat who has a beard and horns? Next slide, please. But when Turkey ventures off the farm to find a friend, she meets someone who would love to be her companion. Next slide, please. A sly, hungry fox. Will her farm friends save her? Next slide, please. Cuddly drawings combined with humor and heart make this a wonderful story to read aloud. Valerie Gorbachev is the author and illustrator of many children's books, including The Giant Hug. Gorbachev immigrated to the United States from the Ukraine in 1991 and now lives in Brooklyn, New York. Next. Merry Christmas, Rainbow Fish. The sparkling rainbow fish is back with this brand new Christmas story, an original board book. Next. Rainbow Fish is all about giving and sharing, a perfect tie-in to the holiday season. Written and illustrated by Marcus Pfister, the Rainbow Fish series has over 40 million copies in print around the world. Next. Next. The holidays continue with the little bell that wouldn't ring. Christmas is coming. Next slide, please. In a church tower, three bells practice ringing for Christmas Eve, but the newest and smallest bell in the tower is silent. What could be wrong? The dove, the wise crow, and all the other animals find good words to try to encourage the little bell to ring, but nothing works until Christmas Eve when they find the words that inspire the little bell to ring out. Peace on earth. 
a lyrical story about the meaning of Christmas with ethereal illustrations from Maya Dusakova, one of North South's favorite illustrators. Slide, please. Next, please. Festivals and Traditions in Switzerland. This book takes you on a very special journey through Switzerland to experience some of the traditional festivals and customs celebrated in all of the seasons. Next slide, please. Some are happy and colorful, others are wild and scary. Slide. On the journey, you'll encounter shepherds, queens, and men dressed as, as trees. In the bull market in Zug, you'll place a bet on the fastest pig, and in the Jura region, you'll admire the horse riders as they race bareback over the track. Slide, please. It's a unique title that shines a light on beautiful Switzerland. Barbara Piatti is a Swiss academic who works on cultural products, projects, and illustrator Yvonne Regenmoser has created several nonfiction books for children. Slide. Next slide, please. Ida and the World Beyond My Kaiser Ziff. Next slide, please. Stunning artwork brings the adventures of Ida Pfeiffer, a 19th century explorer who went her own way to life. Although she lives at a time when girls are expected to be mothers and housewives, Ida Pfeiffer dreams of being an explorer and going on expeditions. She bravely sets off on her first trip around the world, an adventurous journey over land and sea, discovering faraway lands and meeting friendly people along the way. Next slide. With expressive colors, dynamic shapes, and a simple but evocative text, Linda Schwalbe's debut picture book is a joyful tribute to Ida Pfeiffer, one of the first female explorers to travel around the world. Next slide. The birthday from Hans Fisher. Um, this is an adorable story about a family of cats and other animals on the farm. And when their mistress goes into town for the day, they surprise her with a birthday celebration on her return. You can go on to the next slide, please. Hans Fisher is a classic Swiss author. Um, and this is a classic book that's been out of print for years. We're really happy to bring it back into print. Next, please. Two parrots. We're so happy to release a paperback edition of Rashin Karia's take on Rumi's tale of two parrots. Next slide, please. A plucky parrot living in the home of a wealthy merchant appears to have everything, the love of his, of his owner, the best food, and a golden cage. But despite all of this, the parrot is sad. The merchant will do anything to make his parrot happy, but will he be willing to set his beloved pet free? Rashin's colorful and lively illustrations bring fresh and distinctive perspective to this thoughtful classic about what is most important in life. Rashin was born in Iran and now lives in Washington, D.C., and she is one of the most outstanding illustrators working today. Next, please. Little Polar Bear by Libri Editions. Um, I hope many of you are familiar with our Rainbow Fish by Libri Editions. We're happy to continue that program now with Hans de Beer's classic book, The Little Polar Bear, which will be available in 10 paperback bilingual editions that include English German, English French, English Italian, English Spanish, English Arabic, English Mandarin, English Korean, English Japanese, English Russian, and English Vietnamese. Um, it, they're actually really great. They're all fresh translations um, and the packages are really beautiful. It's really nicely done. Um, and then I'm going to close, we can go on to the next slide, please. I will close by introducing Artis, which is a new sister publisher um, that is uh, owned by North South's parent companies. Artis will focus on translated young adult and middle grade books. They'll launch in fall 2020 with the end. Next slide, please a moody thriller about the end of the world. Um, how will the world end? With Foxworth, a me massive meteor hurtling toward Earth, humanity now knows the exact date. Probing the question, how would you spend your last days if you knew exactly when they'd run out? The end is a taut and riveting pre-apocalyptic thriller underpinned with sharp commentary that blends the urgency of Neil and Jared Schusterman's dry with the dark tension of Courtney Summers' Sadie. Swedish author Matt Strandberg is internationally known for his Ingle Forest trilogy, um, co-authored with Sarah Elfgren and his adult horror no novels. This book has been translated from Swedish at Stett in Stockholm and it's really, it's a riveting read. Um, next slide, please. Arctis will also release a classic Christmas book this fall, The Night Before Christmas. 
This wonderful new edition of Clemency Moore's classic Night Before Christmas is a perfect holiday gift. Families who read the poem every year will have a beautiful new hardcover to treasure illustrated by German artist Kai Werbs. Um, all of these books are available for review on Edelweiss and some of them are also on NetGalley. Um, I wanna thank you very much for listening in and you can contact me with any questions um, and I hope you'll you know, visit our website and check out our Instagram contest right now for a free copy of the Hans Christian Andersen book. Thanks. Thank you so much, Heather, and thank you to all of our panelists. Um, it looks like we do have a few minutes for a Q&A if anyone listening in the audience today has some questions. As a reminder, that Q&A toolbar is at the bottom of your screen. Um, there's a little section for Q&A, so if you have any questions, you can just enter them in there, and we'll have our, uh, we'll have our panelists answer those. Um, so go ahead and type your questions in there, and we'll get some answers to you live. Um, in the meantime, uh, our panelists, do you have any questions for each other about any of your books? <laughs> or anything else that you just wanted to mention? Sorry, I kind of put you on the spot there. Um, um, any particular favorites of your own titles? And I know you're not really supposed to pick favorites, but anything you wanted to give a little extra air time for? This is Mimi from HarperCollins. Um, I'll just say I, I was trying to get through my time at the end, but uh, Punching the Air by Evie Zaboy and Youssef Salam. Um, we're really excited about this one. I think it's really powerful um, and it is available on Edelweiss. Um, most of our books that I presented today are available on Edelweiss. Um, so as long as your account indicates that you're a librarian, then you will be approved for all HarperCollins titles, but we are approving annually, so it may take a little while. Um, but yeah, definitely check out our Edelweiss uh, catalog to download an e-galley of anything that looked interesting today. Great, thank you so much. Um, Heather, I think we've had, we're curious in the audience, people want some clarification on how they can win a copy of the Hans Christian Andersen book. Sure, um, just go to our Instagram account and um, like the post that's up today. It's on the Hans Christian Andersen book. So you just like the post and leave a comment and you'll be entered to win. Awesome. I would love it if you followed us on Instagram. <laughs> I'll just ask that you, like it, that you like and leave a comment for now, that'd be good. Maybe you'll see so much great content that you'll be like automatically, you'll wanna join, so. Great. A lot of people are just really excited to see all the titles you have coming out. <laughs> I just wanted to say I'm so excited to see so many people tune in for the for the webcast because, you know, I think we're all heartbroken about not being able to get out and about and meet with people in person. Um, you know, this is really such a crazy time. So I just it's it's great to see so many people tuning in and I thank you all for listening. Yeah, for those of you who have um, nonfiction titles or nonfiction graphic novels, um, we have some questions about some of the back matter for those books. Um, any, could you talk, all of you, any of you speak quickly on that, um, what, your, what your back matter is like in your nonfiction books? Well, I have an author's note in the Hans Christian Andersen um, book, which sort of goes back and forth um, and talks about, it, the book is a lot about how his life in, inspired the fairy tales. So um, the author's note addresses that and the Ida and Mount Kaiser Ziff has a similar author's note, you know, that sort of talks about her real life um, in a little more depth than, um, you know, the picture book story. Awesome. Um, I just answered a question from somebody about who asked about the back matter in the history comics um, series that we're launching this summer. Um, if you're familiar with first, second science comic series, a lot of it will be like that where there's a general storyline, but there will be a lot of facts interspersed throughout. Um, and then there will be um, further back matter at the end of the book as well. Eight. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, well, what are you all reading while you're stuck in quarantine? <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> Our
are you all reading? I know some I, people are finding it really hard. That's actually an interesting topic. Um, Sourcebooks does little educational uh, panels with employees and um, our June discussion is, are you reading differently? Have you gone back to the classics? Are you, you know, not reading at all? Are you not able to get finished books? Um, it's definitely a thing. A lot of people are very restless. Um, I will say that I'm reading Lightbringer, um, which is a little over 500 pages. Um, so I'm obviously not reading it in one setting, but um, I adored Furyborn and I wanted to see where Claire Legrand was gonna take us in the end. So that's what I've been doing uh, kind of 50 pages at a time. Um, I'm reading for, obviously I still read books for work. Like I just got in, um, like I just downloaded Flamer and um, Girl Giant and the Monkey King. But um, for fun, I've actually just been sticking oddly to adult books, which is not normally what I choose to read, even in my free time, um, both fiction and nonfiction. So that's sort of been um, surprising for me. I'm reading a really good book right now, but it's one of ours that's coming out in Winter 21, and I'm not sure if I can talk about it yet. So uh, we do, we have great stuff coming in Winter 21, but I don't know what I can say about it. Great. Well, nice to know we have something to look yeah, forward to. Exactly. Maggie, what are you reading? Right now, everything coming up in the future. It's the same thing. We have our spotlight <laughs> on graphic novels coming up right now, so gotcha. I have a ton of graphic novels in the, the pipeline for me, too. Um, what am I reading? I have uh, Maggie Stiefvater's new graphic novel is what's on my Kindle right now, which or I guess Maggie Stiefvater's first graphic novel, I think. Um, so that's been, that's been fun. Um, yeah. And then we have our, our spotlight on fantasy coming up. So I'm just in, um, I'm in just in a huge fantasy world right now, which has been a nice, a nice escape. Um, thank you guys so much for participating in this webinar. If there were any unanswered questions in the Q&A, we will get all of those sent out to the panelists and we should get some answers to you in the next couple of days. Um, all right. Tomorrow, all attendees will receive an email containing links to today's slide presentation, a title list, a certificate of completion, and a video recording. For more about Booklist webinars, be sure to visit www.booklistonline.com slash webinars, where you can view archives of past webinars and register for upcoming ones. If you haven't already, be sure to check out Booklist Reader, where Booklist contributors post daily about all things books and library land. Did you know that Booklist content is freely available to all until further notice? You can start reading with our digital edition, a format that pairs the page-by-page -page reading experience of print with the convenience of online access at booklistonline.com. If you're interested in subscribing, you can take advantage of this special webinar, webinar offer to get print, online, digital, and archive access to Booklist for only $99. Thank you so much for joining us for today's webinar. And one more huge thank you to all of our sponsors, Macmillan's Children's Publishing Group, Source Books, HarperCollins Children's Books, and North-South Books. This concludes today's webinar.